I'm back. Let's do this. America's sweetheart gave you her cigarette? Dear God, she has the hots for you! Sick. I can't believe you said good old weekly to investigate that stupid walrus while you were hanging out with Helen Moore herself! So, what do you say, you and me, we change places next time, huh? Your turn. Now tell me, what did you find out? Ah, you're gonna love this. You ready? I've got news. But I happen to also have Ooh, a that was close. Yeah. Black Sad. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Black Huh? Oh, Mrs. Colbert. My husband woke me up this morning with roses and breakfast in bed. <laughs> he said he had a scare last night, although he won't give me any details, and that he's been thinking about me ever since. He wants to take me to Niagara Falls for a second honeymoon. That's nice, but I don't know why you're thanking me. Are you kidding? Remember how I doubted him, but you made me change my mind? If he had suggested to take me to Niagara Falls, but I still suspected him, I would have thought it was just a cover. Or worse still, a way to clean his conscience. <laughs> well, I only did my job as honestly as I could. Enjoy your marriage. I hope you and your husband are happy. He helped me, so I'm gonna help him. Uh, but what just happened? Is there anything you didn't tell me? Maybe. But now it's your turn. Tell me about Cassidy. Oof, uh, 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 Come on, uh, spit mm. it out. I didn't find anything suggesting that Cassidy had anything to do with Dunn's murder, but... But? That's quite the tale. But I know Cassidy will be playing poker tonight with one Howard M. Farnham II, a Texas tycoon looking to get his claws on the boxing business. I also know that he and Cassidy have never met in person, and that Farnham, who's staying at the Balford Hotel, hasn't left his room. Apparently, he spent the night with three bottles oh of gosh. bourbon. So. Here's my incredible plan. So much I'll information. Go to the hotel. <laughs> I'd knock him out, huh? And then take his place in the poker game. That way, I'll get Cassidy talking. What do you think? Incredible, right? Huh? 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 Didn't we agree that you would handle Helen more while I dealt with Cassidy next time? No. <laughs> all right so we're gonna go deal with cassidy then see if there's information he has i'm realizing how many of these things i have there's two of them right there it's the USB extender thingies. But I think they're two different models. No, they're the same. Oh, this one has a... I guess they can be powered externally, too. They both handle four, though. Interesting. Good afternoon, Mr. Farnham. What's going on? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm John Blackmore, director of the Balford Hotel. We'd like to make our distinguished guests feel welcome. Please accept this small token of our appreciation. Oh, sure. I was fixing to leave, but I guess them monuments ain't going anywhere. <laughs> well, come on in then. Getting in Farnham's room was easy. Earning his trust was another story. But I always have an ace up my sleeve. It looks good in, in a suit. Blackmore? You okay, partner? 
The best way to earn someone's trust is to make them believe they've earned yours. And sometimes, the best way to fake it is to tell the truth. I... I don't know where to begin. Since I got back from the war, I haven't been the same. Sorry to hear that, son. You should have paid somebody to go in your place, like I did. The <laughs> poor bastard didn't have a pot to piss in, so he'd done a fair deal. Till he went off and got himself killed. But you know what? At least he earned his place in heaven. The good Lord bless that man. And us while we're at it. Cheers! One of the tricks of this trade is to be wary of the biases we all have. They cloud our judgment and blur the person in front of us, painting them with the shades of our preconceived notions of who they should be. But every once in a while, you run into someone so locked in personality that they can only be regarded as a stereotype. Farnham was a disgrace, not only to himself, but to Texas and the entire human race. To think I had to impersonate him. I wish I was Our like human you. race. You seem so content, so free of burdens. Stop right there, partner. You think this old dog don't have ticks? Let me tell you something about my first wife. Woo-wee! Once I had gained Farnham's trust. He's stumping it over the side. The hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. What the? Is this a bird? What can I do for you, sir? I'm here to play me some poker. You got the wrong place, sir. Did you miss the barbershop sign above the door? You have a good evening, sir. Wait, uh... What? A retry? <laughs> okay. I guess we, we, uh, said the wrong thing. The hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. I'll say he's pulling this off too, but he looks funny. What can I do for you, sir? Howdy. My name's Howard M. Farnham II. Okay. Should I know you? What can I do for you, sir? I don't remember. Farnham was one hell of a drinker. I had to get the information out of him. Before he drank himself unconscious. Otherwise, I'd have to find that information myself. Find the requested info before time runs out. Oh boy. Uh, on the table. Check the table. Ding dong. Interesting name for a town. Vietnamese shave. I got a Vietnamese shave last night. No. Please, come in. Of course. I remember you. Take a seat. <laughs> Vietnamese safe. Uh oh. I'm sure you'll understand we can't be too careful. Our host has many enemies, and someone has to keep them at bay. Oh, I understand. Sure, I get it. I'm glad to hear that. Now, please answer my question. How much does it cost to get yourself a clean Vietnamese shave? Try to remember. 
And then, sure enough, booze put the nail on the coffin of my first marriage. You know, the wife that caught me cheating with the maid. <laughs> my second marriage, too. You know what I did to her daddy? Same old, same old with several mistresses. So I decided to stick to my guns and only deal with hookers. Even if I did end up <laughs> marrying some. <laughs> I feel you, Mr. Farnham. So I'm going to be honest with you. I spent all my savings on poker. And if I had any money left, I'd spend that too. Poker's not the trouble. It's the play with no bills in your pocket that's the trouble. Oh, trust me. I had plenty of bills. Come on now. You ain't got a pot to piss in, son. I just paid ten years worth of your salary fixing to play me some poker and that's no more than petty cash to me. Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me my receipts. These are the things I am, boy. Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I, I got it somewhere. Just a sec, I'll get it. I, I just, just, I, Put it over, over, uh, I think he's, uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Not Ding on there, dong. is it? Interesting name for a town. Uh, come on, quick, quick, quick. His bag. Right there. $20,000? Oh my god. Why didn't you just say you had the receipt in your pocket? I'm almost certain, but tell me, who told you to come to this barber shop? Let me tell you a little secret about my first wife, sonny boy. <laughs> when I met that woman, she had no manners, no money, no... Who in the hell... Find him. By God, if it ain't the hero of the day. Listen, listen to him. Come on. It's not going to be easy to sound Texan, but I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't. There we go. I probably Jeez. don't need to imitate his gestures during the game. But it certainly wouldn't hurt to try. This'll surely imbue me with the Texan spirit. I'll be damned. And the hat. Nothing says Texan like a cowboy hat. Anyway, Kenny. Thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> Jenny. The craziest goddamn Texan in New York. My good old friend Kenny. Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. You know how many Kennys there are in New York? Kenny who? Oh, God. So besides when and where the game will be, the password, and the money Farnham dished out, what else do I need? I 
I don't know. Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. They smell like a party. Not even a Bible. Oh God, oh God. Oh no. At least it's comforting to know that when Farnham drinks too much, his female companions have less of a hard time. No! Oh no. Kenny. Kenny, Kenny! Hey, do you think you can't be friends with someone and not know their last name? Hmm. Let me think. No. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> they take no. My good old friend Kenny. Craziest goddamn Texan in no New York. No risks. You know how many Kennys there are in New York? Kenny who? So besides when and where the game will be, the password, and the money Farnham dished out, what else do I need? I don't know, man. Okay, we got that. What else is there? Ah, there's a book. Okay, good, good. Take Luckily, the book. there was only one Kenny in front of his address book. Kenny Eeks. Ah, oh, residing good. Whew. I thought that was the door out of here, not the closet. Cornell Plaza, Manhattan. Stunning penthouse. I'm not surprised. Mr. Eeks has excellent taste. Do you happen to know what he asked for the last time he was here? Try to remember. Uh, oh God. Check the book again, maybe. Maybe not. Oh no, quick, quick, quick. Other door. Open it, open it, open it. No matter it. how superficial someone may seem, there's always a way to win their heart. Don't tell me, Billy Pie. This here is my new friend, Father. Am I right? Sure enough, your barber was fixing to give me a shave. <laughs> you can get a good shave at another time. Billy Bob is always at our beck and call. Of course. Hey, come on. Let's get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's a nice Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Right. Sure, but you better take good care of my girl. It'll be my pleasure. <laughs> All right, we got by that. Jeez. Only after getting Welcome, our throat gentlemen. sliced like two times. Chips are on the table and guns are in the safe. Now, we got a lovely night of poker ahead of us full of smoking and bourbon. So let's get started. Take a seat, Mr. Farnham. Let me introduce you. To my right, wearing gray boxes and weighing in at 140 pounds, the owner of Pink Vice, the largest meat market in all of Manhattan. In other words, a real son of a bitch. 
<laughs> no offense eagle. to the women he exploits. Our reigning champion, Oswald Quince. A title I aim to keep, provided our new contender here doesn't interfere. Sorry, partner. You ain't got a chance in hell. But look at it this way. You're fixing to learn new tricks. <laughs> for better or for worse, I only need one trick. Playing well. The truth is that our friend Fodham owns the largest and, I dare say, most entertaining establishment in Texas. Really? So we're colleagues, then? Yeah, you wish, Quince. He owns a casino. Damn. And it's not even in Austin or Dallas. It's actually in a little town called, uh, uh, yeah, what was it? Darn it. I, I looked it up the other day. It had a funny ring to it. I, I hate it when this happens. I thought they moved all Texan ding casinos dong. to Vegas. Well, gambling is legal. You mean ding dong, Texas? Ha 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 ding dong. That's it. <laughs> Who'd ever think of a name like that? <laughs> well, casino or no casino, let's just hope he doesn't keep as many aces up his sleeve as the late Ventimiglia, huh? Amen. To my left, wearing brown boxes and weighing in at 396 pounds. Frank, show some respect, huh? The hospitality tycoon, Polly. Polly, uh, no. Tycoon? I just own a small bar with pool tables. Clients drink close to nothing and play even less, but certain business transactions just couldn't happen anywhere else. Damn it, Polly. Why don't I know your last name? Because they took it away from me. You have no idea how good my ex-wife's lawyer is. <laughs> <laughs> Women, they even take our damn names. <laughs> like they have a choice. Ah, don't be a sourpuss, Fodham. When you're done sightseeing, why don't you drop by La Iguana for a game of pool, and I'll buy you a drink. But I have to warn you, my clientele isn't crazy about furry fellas such as yourself. I hate pool. Thanks. I love me some pool. Perfect. It'll be my pleasure. You're looking to start your own pool business, Farnham? This guy here wants to start a boxing association in Texas. And guess who he's turning to for advice? To be honest, several things got me worried. So I'd be much obliged for any counseling. So, what worries you? Athletes hooking Those up their with athletes you. hooking up with each other, like Al Stone and Helen Moore. I see you subscribe to What's News. Yeah, my star boxer, the reigning champion. He's having an affair with America's sweetheart. Hey, I got nothing against those two idiots falling in love. Don't get me wrong, but it's taking a toll on his performance. I don't think he'll lose against Yale, but I'm starting to worry a bit. Mm -hmm. Billy, Bob, bring out the bourbon. We're drying up here. I'll deal with a fresh deck, of course. We respect traditions in this establishment. Poker is as boring as it is simple. All you need to do is read people's faces. Ah. And even the worst detective has that trick up his sleeve. The real issue is knowing what to play for when there's much more than just money at stake. Play to win, play to lose. We'll play to win. Damn it! What again? How many games have you won, Farnham? Mark my words. Farnham will be calling his wife before the night is over. Ha! Oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> by the way, yes. you guys hear about Kenny's wife? Pretty tragic, huh? What happened? Oh, playing bad luck. Hey, but Farnham, I'm, I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Try to remember. Anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. 
<laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. And the poor fellow's already got enough on his hands now that his wife. Women just gotta have their vices. Their, well, she's in a rehab clinic now, hooked on tranquilizers and all that. That's it, tranquilizers. Don't tell me women don't have their vices too. Bring out the bourbon, Billy Bob. Come on, come on, give me, give me the bourbon. Maybe I spoke too soon when I said that poker is easy for a good detective. Let's just say it's relatively simple. There's always someone ready to surprise you. Relatively speaking. Well, I'll be damned! I don't believe this! What happened, Farnham? Beginner's luck doesn't last forever. And that's when the real champ comes in. I hope you're ready to lose it all, my friend. <laughs> Poor Farnham! Came looking to make big bucks in the city with his boxing and he's gonna lose it all with polka. <laughs> I hope your counseling will make up for it. Mm, yeah, so how can I be of help? Homicidal boxers. Homicidal boxers like Bobby Yale. Ha! <laughs> That's some piece of news, huh? Hey, I don't know if he did it, but the real problem is that the fight against my champ Stone might not even frickin' happen. The good news is that I've almost convinced the governor to let him out of prison on the day of the fight. Under police escort, that is. I bet you the audience gets a kick out of that. Hmm. How about illegal gamblers? Having to compete with illegal gamblers like that O'Leary fella. Huh? Huh. <laughs> One would almost think that you live in New York, my friend. That son of a bitch killed one of my men and left the poor bastard on my damn porch. But he's a goner now. Ever since the sport got put on TV, people want a fair game, honest boxes, and no shady business. You can't break the law anymore like before. Nowadays, they gotta bribe those big network executives to negotiate for broadcasting rights. Come on, come on! Let's steal another hand before Quince accuses mm. us of trying to break his winning streak. Ain't gonna happen. Gentlemen, I suggest you never tell your sons about this game unless you want to lose their respect. Wait, you mean our sons actually respect us? <laughs> I hear you. There's no way to set boys straight these days. They don't even respond to a good old beating. I dare say Texan boys do respond to a good beating. Hey, careful, Quince. You're talking to a pro. So, uh, Kenny told me you had quite a house full. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? Oh, boy. I don't remember. No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. If I'd been a communist... Perhaps the vision of a millionaire choking on his own vomit would have made my day. Even so, I doubt I could have just stood there and watched him die. Unfortunately, oh. I didn't break a sweat trying to save him. I thought he had the... Oh! <laughs> I thought he was going to tap it, not hold it. Retry. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No, that son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. If I'd been a communist, perhaps the vision of a millionaire choking on his own vomit would have made my day. Even so, I doubt I could have just stood there and watched him die. What? Unfortunately, I didn't break a sweat trying to save him. I guess it does want you to tap it. I just didn't tap it fast enough. I retry again. How many kids you got in that house full of yours?
Takes a few seconds for it to activate, too. No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. If I'd been a communist, perhaps the vision of a millionaire choking on his own vomit would have made my day. Even so, I doubt I could have just stood there and watched him die. Got no, it. Deserving or not, <laughs> the man would live. How many kids are in the picture? Uh, Damn. Six. Six? What well, that's something. I don't know how you deal with all of them. All boys? Does it have to be now? Oh, never let Quince near one of your daughters. Come <laughs> on, Folly. Children are sacred. I won't Child have a finger on them until they're 12. After that, well... <laughs> Let's just say some men have needs that uh, can only be met by a young girl that age. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Are you all right, Farnham? What's uh right here? There goes your winning streak, you sick bastard. Ah, Master Trickster. Rat him out. Keep his secret. Rat him out. Sooner or later, the police are gonna bust your ass. Quince. What the hell are you talking about? I bet you're as bad at hiding those poor girls as you are at keeping that ace up your sleeve. What? You lying piece of shit. Quince? Uh, don't believe a word he's saying, Frank. Oh boy. Don't you dare call me Frank. Billy Bob. It's 500 more huh. for washing up. It's a deal. Damn. And good call, Farnham. I owe you one. Please, take that flying scumbag's tokens. And mine too, if you want them. I'm feeling generous. Hey, turns out the governor accepted my suggestion to let Bobby yell out of prison on the day of the fight. Hey, this is turning out to be the perfect night. I will leave prison for the fight. to go ahead with your new venture, call me Farnham. Your behavior at last night's game was utterly insulting. Never contact me again or I'll put an end to your pathetic life. If our common acquaintance should ask you about your business endeavors, Tell him that boxing is too violent for you. Sign Frank Cassidy. Nice. Uh. My own tracks would be covered the following morning when Cassidy read this note from Farnham. Dear Mr. Cassidy, though I'm grateful for your kind help, last night's game made me realize that boxing is just too violent for a peaceful Texan like myself. I have decided to invest elsewhere. Yours sincerely, Howard M. Farnham II. Damn Texans. <laughs> nice. I mean, I guess we got enough information for our uh, investigation. What is this? 
As for me, it was the first time in days that I had gone to bed without my day. A real shame. Nothing like a bruised body to help you to sleep like a baby. Maybe I should have given myself a beat. Oh boy. Answer the phone, Black Sad. Black Sad. Finally, I need you at the gym now, please. Fourteen days until the fight. So we got exactly two weeks. It was like this when I got here. Let's go ahead and continue this here. When did you get here? I've been calling you for over an hour. Calm down. I'll take care of this. Alright, so Sonya called her over called us over to the gym. Had you already finished looking through these papers? I wish. Well, I guess you'll enjoy sorting all this again. Okay. Did they take anything? What are you doing? Do you like sardines? Excuse me? Do you like sardines? Ugh. I love sardines. I would... Okay. The, oh, they got into the safe, too. Hmm. Looks like the burglar isn't interested in bureaucracy. Not that they I suspect take otherwise. The money. But it's obvious they weren't looking for money. Did they take anything? No. Although... When you went in the hospital room to get your purse, did you get the gun as well? Yes. Isn't it there? I put it back. Oh, I'd boy. rather not go through that again. Believe Sonia. Yeah. That's too bad. It looks like they took it. Missing gun. He appreciates our trust. Alright, so we can uh, use this to make some deductions. Okay. What deductions can we make, though? Elmore carries a cigarette case. And maybe this picture. Okay. It's pretty clear that Helen Moore's cigarette case was a gift from O'Leary. I think pretty much everyone do that. Okay, so they're saying that they're still in love. Helen Moore and Desmond O'Leary are still in love. O'Leary's feet. Helen Moore says she hates him. Okay, what about this? If she's still in love, why does she claim she hates him? What is she hiding? Okay, so we still have one more combination we can make. about these two? No. Okay. This one and...
No. Okay. Uh, one of these can be combined with another. The footprints at the. There we go. No, the footprints don't match. Or if O'Leary killed Dunn, he did it without stepping in the paint or in different shoes. Okay, got that too. What else we got in here? There's some files open up, or the file cabinets are opened up. Uh, oh, there's some papers on the floor. Bingo. What is it? Nothing. Just a freshly signed contract. Yeah. Signed a document with his foot. Does that mean we can make any deductions? It, does this possibly match the footprint at the gym? No? Okay. And it doesn't say that we have one, so... Right now we just have some clues. It's her purse. Hmm. Who's is that? Mary Purnell. You think she did this? Possibly. What would she try to take though? Let's go to the roof. Hmm. Piece of jean fabric on the stairs that led to the gym rooftop. She dropped it and ran. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Are we gonna find a body? Wait here, please. I don't know, this isn't looking too promising. She's, uh, damn. Or Mary Purnell. What's the letter say? Dear Sonia, I need to tell you several, several things, things about, about your father. In fact, I know he would have wanted me to tell you, among them the fact that you co-own an apartment in Manhattan. Please call me. Yours truly, Mary Purnell. Okay. Look at the back. Could be a knife wound. The murder was brutal. If I were you, I wouldn't quit. Trust me, it might be painful at first, but time heals all wounds. Why did you listen to me? Damn. Hey, what else? There. Hmm. Why did you come up here? I want you to call the police, Sonia. 
and then go straight to her friend's house. Don't even think about going home and definitely don't come back here. I'm... I'm staying at a friend's house. I haven't even set foot in my father's place yet. Damn. Good. Do you have the keys? If the murderer didn't find what he was looking for, that might be his next stop. If he hasn't been there yet. One sec, well, Luke. For once, I had the keys to the place. Which meant I wouldn't have to use my lockpicks, or... Uh. Oh. Oh. How did somebody put the lock on like that? Never mind. Okay, somebody was definitely here. I was gonna say it doesn't look like it, but Father of Baseball. There's a card to the left of it. It's hard to believe that a pair of boxing fists could play something like this, although I'm sure he had the lungs for it. It looks like Dunn had already begun to move his things. What's in this box? Dunn. There he is. Thorpe? Hmm. No idea. <laughs> <These two. laughs> they look familiar. The dude on the left. Oh my gosh. Interesting. As I glanced at the telephone, I remembered the weekly password for O'Leary's illegal gambling operation. Even though I had rejected his reward for finding Yale, I had managed to make my own dirty money by ratting out the eagle pimp during our poker game. How much damage could a small bet do? What harm could I do? Only the invisible type. Check everything over here. Black Fantasy, Little Hand Fletcher. Look at that. The guy sure had good taste. The art of boxing. An art, no doubt. I see more art in a boxer's hypnotizing footwork than in certain modern paintings. another card. Hey, look at that. Let's check inside here. Any bodies in the fridge? No. Ready-made meals on airplane trays in front of the TV. Who would have thought we'd end up eating like this? <laughs> you have no idea. Died four days ago. And that lettuce still looks okay. The card on top of the tape, or the fridge. Oh, I got that. What's this? A cigarette? Or no, sardines. it's a, sardines. Sardines. It's been open for a few hours. Ah, and that's the same person that. Okay. What's over here? Purchase of s and sale agreement. Of course. Now I see how Dunn bought the apartment he was going to share with Mary. This place has to be empty in two weeks for the new owners. I wonder if Sonia knows about this. 
Dunn was going to move in with Mary Purnell. Try this room. It's a glove. What's this doing here? One of the very Under few your teen skin. idols who only got better with age. Let's say that the room on his left. Uh oh. Okay, Another no body. Empty closet. Take the picture off the ground. Every morning, so many years later, with ah, a new staff room, sergeant. Maybe we don't need to forget. Maybe pain just transforms into, I don't know, something. The world's best dad on Father's Day, Sonia. Huh. The journal? Seems like a tiny book compared to his hands. I swear. Dear Mary, I bring you to this rooftop where our love was born. Is he practicing? I think he was. I feel for you. He was born to give you this ring and ah, uh, yeah, he was. This is too private. Okay. The broken window. Is this how he got in? There's another card. There's a bathroom. Wow. Could Dunn really afford Black such Panther. luxuries? <laughs> or did he only want to impress Mary? I'm guessing that's expensive. Oh wait, there's a Oh, this is just a book. <laughs> I thought it was a uh like a file with information in it. Oh, there's a painting. Is that the Elaine? The famous I think that painting. That's Dunn's wife's name, according to Jake. Dunn's place. There's a picture of three painted by his by his wife. All right. Let's uh let's make that deductions. I think there might be two. Okay, just one. Uh, empty can of sardines, and then there's also the sardines at the gym. It's pretty clear that the burglar came by the house before heading to the gym, which means he probably didn't find what he was looking for in here. Melly Jim Burglar didn't find what he was looking for at Dunn's place. Okay. Check this room. There's just a card. Anything else? Doesn't look like it. Nothing right there. Quiet Lion. Dunn's nickname? Wasn't Dunn's nickname the Quiet Lynx? I'd swear I saw that on a poster at the gym. Wait, was it Quiet Lion? Yeah, it is Quiet Lion. Okay. Um. Hmm. I think that's everything here. For the most part. I mean, we had played the music. We checked out this. I don't really feel like making a bet. There's nothing else inside here. All right, I guess we can leave. 
It doesn't look like anyone picked the lock. Okay. Maybe not. Somebody tried ripping up the couch, though. What harm could I do? Only the invisible type. I feel like there's something else here. Maybe not. We went back there. Is there any deductions we can make? No, it doesn't show any. We check the fridge. How about in this room again? Empty closet. Is, a, is that a card on the floor? It looks like it. Unless if it's the full card that I got. Uh, there's the painting. Nothing we can do with the painting. Check the bathroom again. Windows untouched. There's nothing right there. The shirt on the t or on the bed. Nothing. No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Back in here again. Maybe there's something. Ah. Interesting. No matter how hard I look, I'm not getting anywhere. I need to talk with Sonia, and maybe with her uncle, Tim. Okay. There we go. So we went directly back. to Tim. I don't know. Good memories? Good memories? An optimist, are we? It's like remembering the last day of summer. Scenes full of joy, picturesque landscapes, and yet the light is faint and the air is still, the calm before the storm. I know the feeling. I know that feeling. I figured that much. 